We're mostly interested in prenatal exposure to chemicals and how that affects the development of the brain and then later the neurodevelopment and cognitive and behavioral function of the child. At a very basic level, what we want to do is try to develop early tests that can look at really basic sort of building blocks of cognitive function like attention, visual attention, especially information processing speed and working memory. So those are building blocks that are just key to most of the cognitive tasks that you would try to do. And they tend to be stable within individuals over time so that we hope by measuring those early in development, we could get an indication of a continued risk that might exist if a chemical affects those processes. The studies that we're doing now, we're, we're looking at really young babies, which is very exciting for us, but they can't just tell us what they know. So we have to be creative in how we can, <laughs> how we can figure out what they do know. So in babies, we use looking behavior. We use an infrared eye tracker, which can very accurately track where they're looking. So we can see uh, which stimulus they're looking at, when they change the direction of their look, how long each fixation is of their looking time, and um, get really precise information. And even as young as four to five months of age, you can see differences in how babies understand and look at the world and solve problems. So for example, to look at their recognition memory, we'll first show them two identical pictures side by side, and we'll give them a period of time to study those faces. So they become familiarized with the face and they get kind of bored with it after a while. And then we'll show them that face paired with a new novel face that they haven't seen before. So the typical thing that a baby will do is look at something novel. That's how they learn about their environment. So if they remember the face they've seen before, they should spend more time looking at the novel face. So by looking at the looking time to the novel face, we can get a measure of their recognition memory. We look at how many times they scan back and forth or the shift rate, and that gives us a measure of their visual attention. And then in terms of their information processing speed, we look at their actual looking time, what's the length of each fixation and how long it is before they habituate and they just start looking away because they're bored with, with the stimuli. And what research in psychology has shown is that babies that have shorter looking times very early in life, they habituate quicker, tend to have higher IQ and better executive functions later in childhood. So it really is a measure of better cognitive performance. It's a technique that's been used in developmental psychology for a long time. I mean, we have to infer, and um, often you need to have various um, controls in there to be sure that you, you know what you have. For example, we've found that babies have a right side preference. They tend to, they'll just tend to look to the right more than the left. So you have to be careful that you're not just always showing the stimulus that's novel, for example, on the right, because you could be measuring their side preference rather than their actual understanding that it's a novel stimulus. So we have to take all kinds of things like that into consideration. The percentage of children in our country that have like, some kind of a learning disability um, or developmental disability uh, is pretty high. And we really don't know the cause for most of this chemical exposures could be contributing, and I think it's really important to try to tease that out. This is something that could be preventable, right? We could prevent exposure if we know it's a risk. Um, so we really want to do the relevant research and try to nail that down so that we can do more to protect children's health.